What's up, guys? Welcome to the May 2022 uh, Nerd Report with me and Property Bear. Um, we're going to go into all of the numbers and what they mean to you. I'm Jamie Tejera, co-owner of Property Bear here in Jacksonville, Florida. This is Carrie Hustis, co-owner and sales leader. While Carrie runs all things sales, my day-to-day -day hunting investments and developments keeps me in two main places in the field, checking out potential opportunities in construction, or on the computer, researching hyperlocal data. So if you're looking for insight on Jacksonville real estate, you've come to the right place. Thanks for checking out our channel. And if you like it, please be sure to subscribe. All right, so in the last 30 days, in the last month, a lot of stuff has happened. A lot of mortgage companies are cutting people. The news is talking about recession. Um, I think I saw one news article talk about how foreclosures are up like 100%, um, 120%. Um, and uh, yeah, so we're going to go into what that means for you on, you know, kind of all sides of, of pricing from a residential standpoint, um, buyer, seller, land, uh, multifamily. Um, but as far as upcoming projects, we have seven, seven or eight renovations going on right now. Um, we've got a duplex in Riverside. We've got a rental in Paxson, Fort Caroline, Arlington area, big house. Um, we've got one by NAS Jacks. That'll probably be the soonest one coming up. Um, we've got a lot of stuff on the west side, including Riverside right now. Um, but if you want to follow, you know, what those projects are, um, we're going to be trying to do a better job of, you know, shooting um, video or Instagrams um, on Instagram uh, of the renovation. So follow our Instagram at property.bear um, and we'll start posting things other than funny bear videos. Um, so as far as what we're buying, um, and this should be a little telling because if we were super worried about what the market's doing, we would, we'd probably be saying that we're backing down a little bit, um, but we're still looking for the same things. We're looking for land, um, eight plus acres, multifamily, anything from two to 50 units and more single family houses that we can renovate and, and get on the market um, or rent out if they make sense. Um, mostly what we wanna buy and hold right now is, um, you know, the multifamily because the hedge funds aren't in that, aren't in that space. So the, the competition's a little different. Um, so let's jump into Domus and let's look at our numbers. Let's start off with closed sales. Um, so again, this is one of those numbers where it's hard to look at because uh, it's supply driven. So it, you know, it goes up, it goes down by, you know, a few hundred homes and it looks like a pretty crazy number. Um, but Duval County had 1400 sales. St. John's had 604 and Clay had 328. Um, I, I'm, not, I'm not really commenting on this going up or down because again, it's supply driven. Uh, let's look at our sales price. Um, so our, our median sales price for St. John's County is 523. Uh, St. John's County actually, I think I read this correctly, um, just eclipsed the unaffordable range um, for a market um, in from a nationwide standpoint, which is crazy because, I mean, I know I'm not saying that 523 is a cheap house, um, but from a, from a national standpoint, um, St. John's County eclipsed that. And a lot of us know St. John's County for like Ponte Vedra and, and those numbers definitely set off, you know, that, that correlation on a chart. Um, but uh, I feel like if you remove that, you'd probably be in the same boat. Um, Clay County, you're at 349. And then Duval County is at 314. As you can see, even from a median standpoint, this, these numbers keep going up. And that's with, um, you know, the last 30 days of interest rates trying to stifle that demand. Um, and we'll get, we'll get more into that. Um, all right, months of inventory. Okay, uh, so it creeped up a little bit. Um, I will say that from our view on the new construction development side with Breeze Homes, we haven't been listing a lot of them uh, because they're just not ready. 
Um, and that's kind of a, this is a, you know, a delayed reaction or a, um, a lagging indicator of something that is not totally correlated, which is supply chain, right? A lot of these houses took longer to get up because materials weren't there, labor shortages, et cetera. And then when they finally do come, you know, you'll, you'll start to see them. So I wouldn't discount supply chain as, you know, not part of this equation because it definitely is. Okay, so talking about interest rates, when the Fed, and we've talked about this before, when, when the Fed wants to kind of stifle that demand, they generally will try to make these changes and they make them, you know, they, they kind of make it too hard and too long, right? Um, they overcompensate for what they're trying to accomplish. Again, in housing, you know, these interest rates affect everything. It's not just, you know, it's retail loans, it's, it's um, you know, home loans, it's, it's every c single type of loan. Um, capital loans, when companies want more working capital, um, it's everything, right? So even though you can see in the numbers, the interest rates are going up, um, prices are also going up because this is not a demand problem. It's truly a supply problem. You can try to stifle the demand all you want, but if the supply is not there, people are going to be fighting over houses. Now, is it pushing some people out of the housing market? Yes. The hard part for them is that the people that it's pushing out of the housing market is pushing them into a rental market and the rental market's not being any kinder. Um, those, those rates are also going up because everything's going up. Um, insurance rates are going up and that has, I, I, that has nothing to do with inflation. That has to do with the, you know, I don't even know how many thousands of claims um, where the insurance companies at a certain point have to raise the rates in order to make money. That's the business they're in. Um, so everything's going up, including rent. So um, if you can lock in a rate for 30 years um, where the taxes are only going to creep up on you in, you know, in Duval County at 3%, um, if it's a homestead, you're going to kind of be in a better shape um, if if we have to work with this inflation for, for more years to come. Um, so that's mortgage rates. And I love that Domus, this new system, is also showing us affordability. Um, so we've got St. John's County um, at a 60. Um, and then remember we talked about in the March video that the affordability um, basically states that, oh, here it is. Values over 100 indicate affordable housing, and under 100 is less than affordable for those making below the median family income. So there's multiple variables in, in the number. Um, I just saw a report that St. John's County dropped b below the national um, you know, rate for affordability, um, but it looks like it would have done that January of 21. Um, again, we talked about it with pricing before, you know, St. John's County also has Ponte Vedra, so it's it's kind of factoring that in. Um, Breeze Homes has a community called Spanish Forest that's going to be going up um, end of this year, beginning of next year. Um, that's workforce housing um, at an affordable price point. That's literally the bread and butter for Breeze Homes. Um, so, you know, that's something to keep in mind. I would say that historically, um, Jacksonville and our surrounding areas are still significantly more affordable than other markets around the country. Um, you know, I've said this a lot, but I really do believe that Jacksonville is Austin 2.0. Um, my sister has been living, you know, in Austin and some of these major markets. She's in the tech industry. And I think it was two years ago, she had to offer $60,000 over list price in order to get her house in like the $400,000 price range, um, which is crazy. Um, so we haven't seen those types of numbers, you know, in, in the $400,000 price point. Um, but I, depending on what happens with interest rates and supply, um, I wouldn't count it out of the question for, as a buyer, what does this mean? Um, as a buyer, it means, you know, not to incite any FOMO, but try to lock in a good rate as soon as you can and try to make one of those decisions because we talked about it last month in every other recession, pr home prices didn't come down. They kept going up, right? If you're locked in at 575, which is still, I believe historically below the average, um, you're still good, right? Six, six and a half. We're underwriting all of our investments 
at seven to eight percent um, on debt service because it'll probably be there by the time we get there. Um, and loans on investment properties are are always higher. Um, so that's you know that's how we're doing it, and we're still making you know we're not forcing deals to work. We're they're, we're making them work. Um, so there's that from a buyer standpoint. You know, I think in the next few months, you're going to see a little bit more inventory. Um, so be on the lookout for that and take advantage of it when you can. Um, don't sit on the fence or you're going to fall over backwards. And as a seller, you kind of have to put yourself in a buyer's shoes as far as like, if I sell, where do I go next, right? You're going to have the advantage of being able to put more cash down on the next properties. So you're kind of offsetting your interest rate expense from like a mortgage standpoint um, and piling that cash into equity that, that you're gaining on the sale. Um, but from a price standpoint, I do not see them in our market coming down. In other markets, I do believe that they're going to start coming down over the next six to 12 months. Um, for us, I don't think the prices will be coming down for the next year. So I hope you found this helpful. If you guys need any help on the on you know buying or selling a home, check out our website, you know, Carrie, Connor, anybody on our team, you know, would love to work with you, Suhey. Um, and if you're looking to sell property, give us a call. We can shop it to the hedge funds. Um, if it's land or one of the investment type assets, happy to go take a look at it. Um, and if you get a chance, follow us on Instagram. Um, we'll be putting more videos out. But thanks for checking us out.